happy to be here today as we celebrate the graduation of our firefighter trainees. And while we celebrate this graduation today, we also celebrate the beginning of a career for the newest members of our fire and EMS family. You know, it was over 40 years ago that I too graduated from the fire academy and while I vaguely remember that day, I don't remember anything about what the fire chief said during his remarks. See, I was still recovering from our class party the night before and quite frankly did not hear anything other than my name when it was called for me to come across the stage. I hope this won't be the case with class 28. The lesson I learned from that day is if I was ever blessed to become a fire chief, I would try to make my remarks somewhat memorable. But before I speak to the trainees, I would like to take a moment to thank our executive and our legislative branches who continue time and time and time again to make public safety a top priority here in Howard County. And you know, it's easy just to say that. It's easy just to let the words come out of your mouth, but through their actions, not through their words, but through their actions, our County Executive Ken Allman and our County Council members have demonstrated their commitment to support the safety of our citizens and our first responders as witnessed here today with the graduation of our firefighter trainees. Dr. Ball, Courtney Watson, you know, on behalf of all the women and men of the Howard County Department of Fire Rescue Services, I thank each of you. I thank all the colleagues on the County Council for your continuous and unwavering support of our department through the years. Thank you so very much. There's also a group here today that uh, we refer to as our unsung heroes, and those are the family members of our graduates. The mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, wives, husbands, children, niece, nephews, and other family members, many of which I had an opportunity to speak to before the event today. And I thank each of you. I thank you as well. I thank you for that love and that patience that each of you demonstrated during those long six months. That love and that patience has created a strong foundation for each of your loved one's career. And while we as firefighters and paramedics have bought into the craziness associated with this profession and the dangers associated with this profession, I clearly understand and our command staff completely understands that it is not okay with any of you, with any family member here today, that you send your loved ones to us and that we don't send them home to you. The entire department, this entire department is committed to do everything humanly possible to return them to you as you send them to us. Through their training, continuing education, physical fitness, constant situational awareness, we will manage the risk. We will reduce the hazard and we will send them home to you each day. If I may, let me ask all the family members to please stand and allow us to recognize you. Thank you. Uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to meet with the trainees to see exactly how they felt about their experience. And they asked if they could be candid, and I said, certainly. They said, will you tell anyone if we tell you? And I said, no. <laughs> and I must admit that I found their comments very disturbing. Academy staff, pay attention. We'll talk later. 
They compared it to the training received by the United States Navy SEALs. Said, Chief, we have been here for long, six tedious months of training. We missed our holidays, our summer vacation at the beach. Couldn't it have been shorter? Every day we had to run through the community carrying a telephone pole. As you've probably seen up here. Don't you know that somebody probably doesn't have a telephone today because we're still carrying their poles? <laughs> the never-ending and relentless calisthenics, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the pull-ups. Chief, I don't understand this. Since we passed the CPAT test before we started the academy, was all that really necessary? They made us swim. We had to swim in freezing cold weather. Snow, ice. Chief, come on now. It was simply cruel and an unusual punishment for something we haven't figured out just yet. And one day, Chief, they took us out to the river. They took us out to the river, they threw us into this fast-moving water, and walked away. <laughs> hoping that someone would throw a rope out to try to save us. They forced us to climb ladders, which wasn't too bad. But Chief, I can't believe this. They made, it, made us even come down head first. Chief, someone's going to get hurt doing it that way. You need to talk to the staff. They made us hold these big hoses and squirt water when it was below freezing, was snowing out. Come on, Chief, that could have waited until the weather was a little bit warmer. Isn't that right? Good. And we had to play a neat game. It really wasn't too bad. Hide and seek in this thing they called a maze. And, you know, we actually enjoyed it. But, Chief, it would have probably been easier, and I know you're into safety, it would have been much safer if we could have used a flashlight while we were in there. Straw that broke the camel's back, and it was universal across the board with everyone over there. They said, Chief, they actually made us go into a burning building. Don't you know someone can really get hurt doing that? We went through these painful obstacle courses. Long days without much sleep. We were up most of the night studying. Certainly would have been much better if we could have taken a 30-minute nap in the morning, maybe one in the late afternoon. We were always hot. It was cold, wet, and miserable. And Chief, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, and please don't tell them we told you. But we were constantly being harassed by these highly trained professional ninja warriors <laughs> who called themselves instructors. And they sought to find those of us who were weak of mind and body and to eliminate us from ever becoming a firefighter or a paramedic. Chief, you need to look into that. We could have had more trainees graduate if they weren't so mean and set the standards so high. So following my meeting with the trainees, I, you know, I was devastated. I'm thinking, what have we done? Making people go into burning buildings, climb ladders, upside down, so what, exactly what have we done? So I decided I would share my comments and my thoughts with the academy staff at the appropriate time and place. And here we are. So will the academy staff please stand? I can't believe it. As ninja warriors, you have also endured the last six months with members of trainee class 28 who have become the newest members of our Fire and EMS family. And for that I thank you. As each of you have become instrumental in molding the lives of each trainee to ensure that is what is most important to all of us takes place at the end of each shift and that they all go home. Your dedication to excellence and professionalism has not gone without notice by myself or anyone else in the department. I'm proud of each of you, and I thank you for your contributions to preparing these trainees for the most rewarding profession in the world. Thank you very much. Now, before I speak to the uh, 
to the trainees, I will speak a little bit about them. A challenge coin. People know what a challenge coin is? Challenge coin. It's a small coin or medallion bearing an organization's insignia or emblem and carried by the organization's members. And traditionally, they are given approved membership when challenged and to enhance morale. Keep that, enhance morale. This is to enhance morale. And it's a subject of great, great national discussion about the next generation of our fire and EMS leaders, our, our, our millennials, many of which are here. My generation, some of our generations, baby boomers, we're very happy with the traditional coin. Very happy with this. However, I knew things were changing during our last graduation when the graduates presented to me the new version of the challenge coin. It was a bottle opener. <laughs> now, little did I know that the department's traditional coin was once again going to be replaced with the graduation of this class. Keep it up around, remember that. It appears class 28 has replaced the challenge coin with a shot glass. <laughs> Chiefs, we've got our hands full. I think we all understand why there continues to be this great national debate about our next generation. But we love you. Now to our graduates. As you recall, when you began your training, I had an opportunity to meet with each of you and to share my thoughts and my expectations. And I told you that if you wanted to be a member of this family, you will have to demonstrate the passion to be the best that you can be. And in order to be the best, only 100% would do. I share with you that this is a profession where even the smallest mistakes, the smallest mistake can lead to serious injury or death. And what separates this department from many others Sorry, Chief. Is that we do take tremendous pride, and they do as well, tremendous pride in being recognized across the country as a department where safety comes first. Number one, safety comes first. As a matter of fact, we were recently notified by the International Association of Fire Chiefs that our department has been selected and will receive a national award here in the next several weeks for organizational excellence in safety. We are committed to safety. I told you that this is a profession that has gone through significant change over the last 20 years. A good friend of mine, uh, Jerry Wargo, is with us today. He and I grew up together and we were talking about the change. Huge, huge changes. And it's one that no longer simply represents responding to fires as its primary mission. And that we are no different than any other department that's sitting with us today or any other department across this country is the department along with fighting fires has a primary mission to provide emergency medical care as well. No longer is it good enough to just be a firefighter. It's important to be a good EMS provider as well and it's important for you to understand that. That's what we do. So as you leave here today, please remember that my thoughts of you on day one and expectations are the same today as you graduate and they will be the same throughout your career. They haven't changed. There's a statement that uh, many of you all have heard, some cliche, uh, find a career, my father always told me this, find a career that you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. You know, he was right, because I did find that career. And while you may not realize it today as you're sitting here, you have found that career as well. You have found a career where all successful firefighters and paramedics are big dreamers. They imagine what their future could be. It's ideal in every respect. And then they work every day toward their distant vision, that goal or that purpose to be the best that they can be. And the future will belong to each of you. 
It will belong to each of you if you believe in the beauty of those dreams. And those dreams will not be measured by the passing of years because they come and they go so fast. But by what you do, what you feel, and what you achieve safely each and every day. While you and others came to this department short, six short months ago as individuals from many walks of life where success was often determined by individual efforts, you leave here today as an individual where success is often determined by a team effort, and you've learned that. Very few things can you do by yourself in this profession. It is a team. And as you leave the guiding hands of your academy staff, you cannot help but learn more as you take on this profession of deep caring, of loving, and giving with your own hands. Take it up reverently. Be serious about it. Take it up reverently for it's like a piece of clay that has many fingerprints all over it. The thumbprints and fingerprints of those who have preceded you, many of which are in this audience today. And as you move through your career, you will have some days that are certainly better than others. But always, always strive for that perfect day. That perfect day. Strive for that day when you realize that you have done something for someone you don't even know, and they will never be able to return that favor. As you leave this afternoon with your graduation certificate in hand, I want each of you to think of it as a ticket, a ticket to the greatest profession in the world. Think of it as a ticket to serve the citizens, citizens of this great community. Think of it as your ticket to contribute to our county and to our department in a very positive way. Think of it as a ticket to be a first-rate version of yourself, not a second-rate version of somebody else. Albert Einstein once said, the important thing in life is to never stop questioning. This is also your ticket to ask questions. Because the more you ask, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more you will understand why. You will leave here today no longer a trainee as you have worked very hard to be a recruit. As a recruit, do not waste time learning the tricks of the trade. Learn the trade itself. What lies ahead of you pales in comparison to what is now behind you. You have the knowledge in this brain. You can steer that any way you choose. But now you're on your own. And you know what you know, but be aware and be careful of what you do not know. And only you, only you can decide the direction that will go. I am extremely proud of each and every one of you. I cannot begin to tell you how proud I am and many others in this department are of you. You are one of 1,500, 1,500 people who are going to be sitting where you're sitting. You worked hard. And you have demonstrated the passion to be the best that you can be. And you are the best that you can be. On behalf of the citizens of Howard County, we congratulate you. We congratulate you for a job well done. And this county and this nation welcomes you to our fire and EMS family. Congratulations to each other.